So why should we randomize our experiment? So let us consider an experiment. Suppose you want to test two characters A and B. Which one is faster? Mm -hmm. So you can uh, make a list of several numbers and ask a person to compute the sum of squares of those numbers using first calculator A. So you have say several sets of numbers to so compute the sum of squares using calculator A first and then perhaps you try calculator B and do all the calculations with calculator B. So you are always using calculator A first and then only you are using calculator B. So what is the problem with this experimental plan? So always calculator A is used first. So when you are entering numbers in calculator A, you have got, become familiar with that set of numbers. And if you are entering the same set of numbers in calculator B later, always you are using calculator B later. So now you are more familiar with the numbers, so you may be able to enter the numbers faster. So increased familiarity may affect your results. And similarly, if you are first using calculator A and then using calculator B, so when you use calculator B, maybe after doing a lot of calculations, you may be tired. So that may be affect your, the speed at which you are able to enter data using your fingers. So fatigue may affect your results. So all such extraneous factors will always affect experimental results. So we say that if you do always A first, then that run order, the order in which you do the experiment is called the run order. So that is a biased run order. So we know that there is another variable at least that is the familiarity with the numbers which is affecting your results. So in general there could be any number of hidden variables. So here we mentioned fit, familiarity with the numbers and fatigue. Maybe even uh, room temperature could be affecting your results. Maybe at some times the temperature is too high and that is causing discomfort to you in your concentration, etc. So, so many things are going to always affect your experimental results. So, how can we avoid the effect of extraneous variables on your experimental results? Of course, we cannot control them. We try to control them, then we say it is, we say it is blocking. So, we try to minimize the variation of extraneous variables as far as possible. Of course, that is generally good experimental procedure. But still, there will always be some variation in all these extraneous variables. So what can we do? So for that, we can use the technique of randomization. So this was first identified by Fisher, how we could eliminate the bias due to experimental in order using randomization. So randomization is like insurance. So we don't know whether something may affect your experiment. But by carrying out the experiment in random order, the effect of such variables can be, the bias due to such variables can be eliminated. The experiment is thereby protected against any unusual event that he has not planned for. So in calibration experiments, so where we try to calibrate one instrument using certain standard values. So by carrying out this experiment, calibration experiments in random order, the impact of interfering variables is minimized. It is not eliminated. We are minimizing the impact. The effect is the bias due to that variable is minimized. So during calibration, when you are taking in increasing order and you are taking readings in decreasing order, there will be a difference. So that is called 
the hysteresis effect. So those effects and interference of others, they will get mixed up with the effect due to extraneous variables to give maximum variation. So randomization will not reduce the variation, but it will increase the variation. So, but the bias is avoided. So there is no particular bias by carrying out the experiment in random order. So application of each input value becomes independent of the previous one. So if you are taking readings in increasing order, the second input value depends on the previous value. It is just the next value. So then, so many of your assumptions and statistics are violated. So all your formula for statistics in statistics, like standard deviation of the average is sigma by root n. That is all valid only if the samples are taken in random order. So if you are taking dependent readings, then those formulae are not valid. So random variation in input better represents the actual measurement. So when you are using a calibrated measuring instrument, the input variable maybe will not be always increasing or decreasing. So in a real measurement, you may get a high value at one moment, immediately it may be a low value next moment, etc. So it is not fair to use either increasing order or decreasing order. So the real variable will always be in random order. So when you calibrate also, if you use random variation of input, that better represents the actual measurement conditions. So that is why we use or we do calibration in random order. So now we learn how to systematically generate a run order to avoid any human bias in the run order generator and to verify how the bias or the run order, whether the run order is satisfactory or not.